everyone, it's Sue from Fiona's Fabrics in Woodbridge. Today, as promised, I'm going to try and take you onto a first project for free motion sewing. Now, when we did this at the shop, we did this little wall hanging. Um, very, looks quite involved, but it's quite simple, and it's a really good way of practicing your stitches. So if I just sort of scan over it, you can see just different types of stitching going through, just adding different beads and textures with trims, um, and you get actually quite a simple but effective wall hanging. Now, some of the choice of that is in the choice of the fabric. So when you're choosing your fabrics, you tie them together. Today, I'm gonna to work on a smaller piece. Um, if that hasn't frightened you off, please don't let it because it is quite simple. So today, I'm gonna to work on this piece here. So you can see I've sort of toned a few fabrics together. This is just some scrap of batiks. Batiks work particularly well. Um, and this smaller one will just give you an idea of, of how to get about it. Um, something else to consider is the type of fabrics. So here I've got, I had a pack of silks and I think they look quite nice that way. It sort of depicts a scene coming from this um, hazy purpley pinks down through to this creamy bit at the bottom. And again, I've done the same sort of thing on there. So it's just practicing your stitches. Always good to look at the back because you can see what you've done on the back. Um, so there's no right or wrong way, um, even if you've got ends of jelly rolls or just strips of scrap fabric, it doesn't, know, doesn't matter what it is, it's about actually stitching. Um, before we get going, word on threads. Now I'm going to use today, I'm going to use one of these oops, variegated threads that we sell in the shop. Now these are Gutemann, they're great, they come in a variety of colours. Um, and just for ease today, because it means I don't have to keep taking it on our machine, just lost my little holdy on anything. Um, then I'm just going to keep that on the top. But if you're working on a project, especially like this where it are individual colours, then try and get a selection of threads. Now I've just put these together um, just to show you the sort of thing I would look for. And if you sort of try and line up a few threads, it doesn't matter how many you use, um, just work with what you've got in the background colour. Now I was going to put this one on, but you can see this one's a little bit too harsh to work with the others. So take the time to put your threads to your fabrics, stand back, even go out the room, come back in and have a look. Um, you'll see it in a different line. You'll see if one's jarring. I don't need two of the pinks, so I'm gonna take that one out. Um, and they work quite nicely in unison together. So do take the time. Now, lots and lots of um, packs of yarns on the internet, but what I would advise is you buy them as you need them, because otherwise you're gonna spend a lot of money and in the end, you don't know if you really like this style of sewing, so they might just get wasted. So to start with, cut yourself some strips. Now this one is, um, they're about two and a half inch strips. The actual width isn't, it uh, doesn't really matter because um, I say it's, it's a practice piece, but we should be able to do a little bit of art with it afterwards. I've just stitched them together with a quarter inch seam at the back, and then I've pressed them all to one way. So at the front, I've got this nicely stripped piece of work. I've got a bit of old curtain interlining, it's just a polyester interlining. You could use quilt batting, a um, bit of old uh, micro fleece fleece, something like that. Something to give it a bit of body and that will then give you a different texture on the front once you start stitching. Um, felt would work just as well but a little bit more expensive. So keep all those scraps um, and, and get them sort of all in a box together. Now I've just literally put a bit of um, glue stick on this to hold it together. You can get spray adhesives. Um, if you're not sure, it will hold together once you start stitching, so, um, you know, don't be too worried about it. But if you just need a little bit of extra on there, just put a little bit of glue on the back. Be sparing with that because you don't want lots of tacky glue on the back. And that will just hold everything together. That's all you need to do. We don't want to be putting pins in this because we don't want to be hitting pins. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take each panel and we're going to do a different type of stitch across it. And by doing that, you're learning how your machine works, what stitches you like best, which way you like to sew best. And it is all trial and error. Now, I've not, not tried this. Um, I've not done this one before. I haven't planned it. So we're just going to see with what we're going to get. Um, I'm not going to start on the end ones. I like to start from the centre and then work over. What I would say is when you're stitching these, especially we've got a join, don't think you've got to stitch within the two seam lines. Take them over the join and that will help it become one piece. I hope that makes sense. So, set your machine up for free motion sewing. And so on this, I've got my free motion foot on. I've got my extension table and my feed dogs are down. Now, if you are totally new to this um, and you don't know what I'm talking about, go and look at my uh, free motion sewing um, tutorial and you'll get an idea of what you need to do and how to get to this. As ever, before you actually start on your main piece, just make sure your work machine's working okay. Have a little doodle on a bit of scrap fabric, which I've done already. 
because I haven't done a bit of free motion for a long time. And then we'll set going. I'm hoping you can get this on camera and I'm going to try and work on a slight angle to hope you can get it. So I'm going to start at one end. I'm putting my presser foot down. Now you still need to put that presser foot down because that engages the top tension. And if you don't do that, you'll have lots of loops underneath. On this machine, I'm going to set my machine stitch down. So I've pressed it down. I'm also going to lift it and bring this bottom thread to the top. Now the reason we bring our bobbin thread to the top is so that it doesn't all get jammed up underneath and of course and not underneath. Now I'm just using a cream. You can use up all your old bobbins on this as long as it doesn't show on the top and that depends on how you stitch it'll be good. So again I'm gonna I've brought my thread to the top I'm gonna put my needle in so now when I stop sewing that needle will always stitch and stop in. So how do we start? We stitch on the spot to start with before you move away. I hope my hands are out of the way enough for you to see. So I'm just going to do a few stitches on the top and then start to meander around. Now, my machine set at a straight stitch. Um, some people say to set it to zero. I find you don't need to do that because you're working with free motion work. You are de determining the length of that stitch by how quickly or how slowly you move. So if you stitch slowly and move slowly, you will get a small stitch. You need to go slightly faster than you're, you feel you're comfortable with because that will build up um, like a cadence and it'll be easier to do it. So I'm just going to do a few stitches so you can watch. And I'm going to, that's quite a nice speed. Now I'm just meandering and I'm coming onto this second fabric at the top and just wobbling over this line. And I'm just doing a little wavy line. And every time I stop, that needle's going in. Okay, so I'm at the other side. Now, with free motion, I can work backwards, forwards, any direction because you are manipulating the fabric. If I just stitch, the, um, the fabric will not move underneath this. So I don't know if you can actually see on here. I've got a wavy line. Let me get my marker. The wavy line is coming down around like this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and keep the same distance apart. So I'm going to move down a couple of big stitches. I'm going to follow what I've done already. And again, this is a good guide for you for what you're going to learn how to do. So I'm trying to keep that gap the same. Now, when you feel you're going out, stop, reposition your hands, get comfortable and then move away again. So again, I'm just following, meandering along, following the line that I did previously. Let's get those threads off. All I'm going to do with this, I'm going to work back and forwards across this piece and I'll, I'll do it quickly so that then I can take it off and show you. And remember we're looking at trying to keep these lines and these stitches nice and uniform. Right, I'm going to go backwards. I can't actually see where I'm going. So, And again, that's down to you learning what you can do with this. It's just quicker if I did it that way. So again... Be careful not to rock in front, but we keep this fabric nice and flat still. And you see, I'm not concentrating too much on what I'm actually doing. It was easier going this way. But what I'm doing, I'm just filling it in quickly just to show you what I'm trying to achieve. Right, now I'm going to take this off the machine so I can show you a bit closer. So all I've done on this is I've just done some wavy lines. And you can see here the lines coming across. So that's your first one to do. And do this little wavy line, it makes it easier and you will then get a bit more comfortable with your sewing. So what we're going to do next, I think I'm going to work on this, um, this piece here. I'm going to do some little circles. Now, you learn through these techniques how the fabric reacts to certain ways that you stitch. And what I mean by that is if I do some circles across here, so I've brought my thread to the top so I've taken it off the machine a foot down don't forget that some machines tell you some machines don't so I'm gonna do on this one I'm gonna do some sort of loops now when I do the loops um, just show you on a bit of calico you can see this when I do a loop I'm going to do a loop in like a figure of eight and you can see can you see how sinewy those lines are when I draw them and I'm coming off on a curve now if you went and did a round and then came and did another, it's not as pleasing to the eye. It looks like a little pair of glasses. So try and get that nice circular motion and always worth practicing on a piece of paper to get your memory and it will help your memory of how you stitch. 
So I'm going to come along here, I'm going to do a little straight stitch and I'm going to do a great big circle. Now I have to go around part of it again to get another one. I'm going to do another line and another circle. Now I'm not making these, I'm roughly making them about similar sizes, but I'm not worrying too much if I wanted to do smaller. I'm not making them in line particularly. I'm just filling in the space. And you can see all the time it's a lovely circular motion. Right, I've done a few closer together at this end. So I hope you can see on here, I don't know if you can see fully. Again, let me take it off just for a second. Just to, you can see on there I've done these circles. Okay, now I'm going to leave the centre of the circle. I'm going to leave that full. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to scribble. And if you go to smaller stitches, just do tiny pebbles and just scribble around, it doesn't matter. And what you'll do is you'll infill between those. Just do one area so you can see. I'm going to work on this one. So if you fill it up with circles first, I'll keep going back over and it will just really squash this fabric down. And you can see I'm just going, jigging about, doing little circles, moving it around. Because the thread's changing colour, it's giving it a different sort of design perspective. And the beauty of this type of sewing is no right and wrong way. So I've done that. I'm going to go around the circle again, and I'm going to stitch around following the first line of stitching. Now, try and do it the way I'm doing it. Don't be turning your fabric, because you'll get a nicer loop and I'll go round and round and round and what you find is there's nowhere for the, fab the fabric to go in the middle of the circle so it starts to pop slightly and you can see how many times round I'm going and again I have to take it off so you can see this is going to be a real sample with bits and pieces so what I've got there I've got a, a circle here this is my circle and I've scribbled around it. Now, I've not got a particularly thick piece of wadding on the back. Depending on how thick that piece of wadding is on the back, this will make this, this pop slightly more. But once you've done the whole bit, let me grab the original piece, you can see what you can get to. And these, you can feel that they've, they've popped up. So there's a little bit of relief on there and it gives it a different texture for your stitching. What I've done with this one, you can see I've scribbled in between here, but then when I finished, I've gone over with a metallic thread just to highlight all those bubbles. So these bubbles go across and it just, you, it's a way of creating texture within your, your stitching. Right, I'm gonna leave that one now because I want to show you several different techniques. I'm gonna come back down to the one below where we started. So what I'm gonna do on this one, I'm gonna again start with my needle in. I'm going to do, um, one that I, a technique that I use when I'm doing sort of sea skit scenes and trying to make the, uh, the look of waves or sand. So I sort of come around, always nice loose motions. I'm going back on it. I don't know if you can see on this. I will fill it in and then I will show you, but I'm coming forwards. Again, I'm not planning it. You don't always have to plan things. And sometimes these are the sort of techniques that actually you get lovely designs, just purely accidentally. And you'll know whether you've got a bit where it's, you need a little bit more texture in there. And you'll know the sort that you'd like to see. And we all build up our idea of what looks nice. So once again, I'm going over that bottom piece. And hopefully you can see with that one, you can see the lines that I've done. And you can see if you look at it sideways, I've done this sort of coming over, back, over, back, and just filled it in gradually. So there's a quilting um, 
the stipple that the quilters use to fill in areas um, that's called vermicelli. And vermicelli is, it's where you do a, just do a draw a little bit of it till I've not practiced this. And you do sort of nice lines, but you're moving around the whole time. And again, it's one of those practice ones. So you end up with something a little bit like this. And again, the more you draw it, the easier it is when you come to sew it. So again, I'm just going to play around with this one. I'm going to fill this area in here. So you're creating like a little bobble. And then you're travelling around. And the idea is you don't cross any of these lines. Take care of your fingers when you get to the bottom piece. Always make sure you go to the edges because once you work this up, um, and you put a binder in it, you don't want it just stop start. And you see here I've left a bit undone, so I'm going to turn around and just come back down to this piece. And I'm happy that that's filled in. I'll come back and work towards me. ahead but I'm keeping that really nice regular speed right so that's this one done let's see what we've got and again hold it close to the camera and you can see now we're getting texture across all of these panels so what are we going to do on the last one so let's have a look what we've got on this bottle that I've completed um, I've got straight lines I've got little wonders going up got different areas I've got circles with nothing through them this one is on an angle well, that's quite a nice one with the little curly cue in it. Let's do that. And as I say, it's just this is a good practice piece for your stitching. Okay, threads up to the top because I've had it off on the machine. So what I'm going to do now, needle down, stitch on the spot and then move away. So I'm just going to do a little curl here. With a little circle in it. Once you relax into it, your sewing will be easier for you and it's learning to have the confidence and just to relax and go with it. Right, again let's see what we've got. So on there you can see I've just done these swirls all over. Now how close, how far apart? This is totally a design issue. Um, I'm not a textile designer, I'm a sewer. I've sewn for many years, um, so the design of this is totally up to you. My job is to get you to learn how to stitch and how to be comfortable with the stitching. Um, on the main piece, um, as you can see, once I've got all my stitching in place, I've highlighted with uh, a metallic thread on a lot of them. If I use this one as an example, I think it shines. You can see on that one, I've gone over initially with the variegated and then I've, I've outlined it, gone it over it again, each side of the line with a nice gold thread. Just remember when you're using metallic threads on your machine to lessen the top tension. So um, on, on here, on the dial, this um, is normally around four. So take that down to one or two, if you can see that on the camera, this, this dial here. Um, but again, all this is on the, um, the tutorial I did previously. Other things I've done on this, I've couched down some threads. So you can see here, I've got this thread here. And you can do that easily on the machines. And then I've added interest points with some tiny beads and I've put some big beads down. I've done fibres with little toughy bits. Um, I'll just show you quickly how to couch down a thread. 
Now I'm going to use my free motion foot. On some machines you can buy um, a couching foot and on my other machine there's something like this. So this one's got a hole in which you thread your cord through and then you set the machine to zigzag. And then once you set the machine to zigzag, you can zigzag over the cord and everywhere you, you direct your fabric on the foot, the cord will follow. This one here is designed for three cords and you put the cord in, they're a finer cord, and then you clip it in and exactly the same process. Um, you know, this is the sort of thing, if you get really get into it, it might be worth buying, but actually you can, you can achieve this without that. So I've just got a, a cord that was in with something. And this one's just a, like a baker twine, so it's just two, two colours. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set my machine over it. So I'm just still with my free motion foot. Now I'm going to set my machine to a zigzag. Now on this machine it is a 10, so I'm going to go to 10. Um, the needle goes down, the needle comes up. So this one will, will zigzag for me. Now, depending on the width, and how far apart you need to adjust your, your um, thread accordingly, your, your stitch rather. So can you, I don't know if you can see, and get it closer into the camera. I've got my stitch, my thread down here, my cord, and my needle is gonna swing over. Now, my stitch length is on 1.5. If I take it up to three, the stitch will be bigger and it will cover more quickly. Now, I'm moving this as I go. So if I want to come around a corner, then I move it this way. Now I think this is a bit wide, so I'm gonna come across to my narrow stitch for the stitch width. So don't go too complicated with your, um, your design of what you're gonna do initially. Get used to the practice of it and how you can couch this thread down. I need a little bit more width. I'm just gonna go round, and you can see you just move it accordingly. And again, this is the sort of thing that you could try and pin this in place, but with this type of sewing, a lot of it is just go with it. Um, and it does really work. So I've done a nice sort of a crossover there. And you soon learn, you've got to just take your cord where you want it to go. And as long as you're catching it or going over it, it doesn't matter, it'll get the stitch. And of course, if you have a plain cord, like a rat's tail, that's that silky cord that you can buy. Um, if you use a metallic thread to go over it, or a contrast thread, it'll give a different look totally. So you can see I'm just working around this, just playing around, and I'll take it off and show you. So I've gone over some of the work previously. So I just did this piece here, up and down, and then I've gone round that circle. And all it's doing is it's couching that thread down. Now obviously depending on what you're using, you can use wool fibres, so if you've got knitting, fancy knitting yarns and things like that, then that's great. Um, have a look at them. And you will gradually build up a, a little box of all these little delights, um, and you'll get to know what you like on it. Um, before we finish, I just want to show you this piece. Now if you don't like the idea of the strips, this is something you could do. And again, this is just a piece of batik. And again, it's on a piece of, um, this is a leftover bit of quilt wadding. And what I've done is I've roughly drawn with one of those iron away pens a, a rough idea of where I'm going to go. And I don't know if you can actually see on there some of the designs. So I started this one, and I like this vibrant orange against the, the green, because it's a limey green. And I've done what I did on the other one, but tiny little, little circles, and I've scribbled in between. And then I've couched a cord down this side, lime green, and I've put lime green over it. So it's not very obvious but it all tones in. There's a straight line here next to it, and then alongside it, I've just meandered in and out, in and out. Now, it's exactly the same principle as this piece, but you're working one flat piece of fabric. So you, as long as you've got a fabric with a bit of interest in it, it'll work. What do you do with this when you're finished? Well, um, it's knowing that you have finished because you can play with it forevermore by adding beads and buttons and bits and pieces. Um, the first thing you will need to do is to sign it, free motion, obviously, and then make it up into a little wall hanging, or you could have it for a panel for a bag, or cushion covers, or placemats. Placemats, obviously not with beads. Um, there's a multitude of, of things you could do with it. Now this one I've bound, and I've put the back, I've done calico. Now if you like this idea with a little hanging sleeve, they look really nice, and you can do quite small ones, long, thin ones, whatever size you like. 
if you like this idea, then um, if you've done your piece and you're ready to make it up, go and check out my the Suffolk Puff Christmas uh, wall hanging tutorial because I show you how to back, do the sleeve and add the binding. Um, but I so say this tutorial is really just getting you going with your sewing. So you will either love it or you won't. Um, be patient with it, stick with it. It is practice, practice, practice. And when you've done that, it's more practice. And one day something will click and you will say, I get it. And you will be amazed at what you make. Check out the internet for different designers. They all do different types of um, styles. You'll find your style. Um, I will do a couple more tutorials and I'll just grab this one. This one wasn't free motion, but it could easily be. And you can build up little scenes like this um, and we'll do some postcards and I will come together with two or three very simple projects. So as a beginner, you will feel you've achieved something. I really hope you enjoy it as much as I do and thank you for watching. Stay safe and I'll see you again soon.